We're back here again at Duckman Cycles. I'm working on my 1956 Volkswagen Beetle, also known as Eleanor. I'm trying to get the gas tank finished up that I've been working on over here. And uh, this is the top section to it. I figured I should try to scratch out as much of the rust as possible, which mostly looks like it's superficial. I'm actually burning down to shiny metal. So the inside top of the tank is not in too bad a shape. Yeah, I was a little concerned that this was going to take a lot of work to get the rust, rust out of it, but... Uh, you know, we're going to, of course, coat the inside of it anyway, because when you weld these things, you never know if you're leaving a pinhole, and the coating will fill pinholes. So, I'm going to get this thing all cleaned up. I'm going to get it treated. Um, I'm going to continue to wire brush the inside of it. And look, I got a new wire brush. I've already beat the hell out of it because I ran it over at the motorcycle. But, uh, yeah, I got a new wire brush. And I've got wonderful phosphoric acid. The same stuff that you saw me treat the floor pans with that uh, does a really, really excellent job of converting rust and, and even removing it in some cases. If you want to find out more about this product, look down in my video description. You'll also find it in my first pinned comments, and you can go ahead and buy yourself some of this. This stuff is uh, incredibly convenient. It does an excellent, excellent job of not only removing rust when possible, but converting what's left and then sealing it up so that way future rust doesn't come back. And any time that I've used this stuff, even if the car sat outside for a long period of time and no paint on it, it didn't re-rust in the places that were treated. So that was pretty amazing. One of the places on the, uh, the oval, for example, this is all bare metal. This has been sitting as bare metal for over a year <laughs> since I welded this all together. I treated it with the phosphoric acid, and it has not rusted again, even in Florida's humidity. I'm trying to think if there's any spot that I hadn't treated. Yeah, here's a spot I didn't treat. So you see the surface rust had started to reform. So I will treat it with that, hit it with the wire brush, and that will come right off. And then it won't rust again. But uh, yeah, it forms a really good protective layer. You know, I've gotten a lot of flack about it from a lot of the people on my YouTube that tell me that, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about or it doesn't work. But, you know, I, I had a car sitting outside for almost 10 years, and any place that I put that stuff on, it didn't re-rust again, including rust that was already there that uh, I couldn't completely remove. I did the best effort that I could. And that's really where the wire brush comes in. You gotta wire brush it first. There's no better solution than a mechanical uh, removal of as much rust as you can. Don't expect the acid to do all of it. You know, I wouldn't just drench this thing and let it sit and expect it to work. But again, as always, if you like my video and you like what I'm doing here, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Click that little subscribe button down on the bottom and pluck that little dingle belly so you get updates every time I upload a new video. Don't forget, I've got more than one channel, not only Duckman Cycles, but I also have VV the Duck and Skeeter the Duck. So please check out my other channels. Thanks so much for watching. I got to looking at this a little more closely as to how the tank fits into the spare tire area and I figured before I started welding on this thing I should give it a test run and see if it will fit with a stock size spare tire and the answer is no it doesn't. So I'm going to have to um, move the top of the tank back a little bit or perhaps angle it a little bit towards the back and not a whole lot. It needs maybe about an inch or so. I, I think I can uh, hack and whack it and make this work. I might find myself moving the... I might find myself mo moving the fuel sender, though, a little bit further to the back also as a result. Ah, it's a nuisance, but it's not impossible. Yeah, if that tire had full pressure in it right now, it would not push down in there. Okay, I think what we'll do is we'll push the spare tire into place, and then reassemble the tank. Wow, that is a snug fit. Well, I can always put a low profile tire in there also, or something skinnier. It doesn't have to be stock configuration. 
but oh yeah, that's <laughs> that's not going to do it. We're going to have an issue there for sure. Instead of the stock 165 that's in here now, let's try a low profile 135. Well, that certainly dropped in there a whole lot easier. That looked like originally the way I intended it. Stuff here in the trunk. Does it close on that? Okay. It closes. Okay. Okay, the answer might be just to uh, use a lower profile tire in there. And I don't have to modify the tank too much. I am still going to bump it backwards a little bit. Just a little bit, though. Yeah, just a little bit. And I still might get a stock tire in. I'm just going to have to let the air out of it out and keep a compressor and hope that it runs. <laughs> the tires that are on this car, 205 in the front, and I think it's a 225 in the back. There's no way in, in hell that that's going to fit in there unless I completely remove the gas tank and re-engineer the front end over here, and that's what I'm not going to do. But this does work. This is something I can live with. I don't mind putting a slightly smaller tire in there. After all, it's a spare. What modern car doesn't have a stupid donut anymore? <laughs> the stupid donut will work just fine for in here. Alright, I think I did a pretty good job in there. They're getting that loose rust shaken out of there. And as always, I keep my iron filings. That's it. <laughs> That's to piss off the purists. Oh, it's not original metal. Well, that is. <laughs> okay. This is looking pretty good. What we're going to do now is we're going to treat the inside of it with the acid. I found no better method for this than to just use a, a paintbrush. Just literally pour the acid right on and then spread it out. And right before your eyes, you're going to see this rust will start turning black. And some of it might even completely come off. The reason why I'm doing this, even though we're not going to see it, and that it's on the inside, is because I need the coating to stick. And the inside coating is kind of like paint. It's not going to stick very well to rust. You're going to have to get all the stuff loose. And there's, of course, ways to loosen it up while it's still inside the gas tank. You can take a handful of, uh, of shot, you know, like uh, buckshot, throw it down the side of there and shake it. That's a lot of work, though. You can also... Um, Throw a motorcycle chain in there, shake it all around. You can also take an old uh, um, clutch cable from a Volkswagen, put it on a drill, stick it down through the hole in the gas tank, and just let it whip around on the inside. And while it does a good job, it's really not thorough. It tends to miss a lot of spots. Yeah, you can see the, uh, the bare metal starting to show. The rust is disappearing. Okay, so all the naysayers out there to say that this method doesn't work, you're actually getting to watch it happen. It's actually occurring right in front of your eyes. Now typically this uh, chemical application should be left on overnight. Uh, if you need to take it off a little bit sooner, you can rinse it off with water. But try to let it soak for a while. It's really important that it gets in there and uh, soaks down into the pores of the metal. And normally metal wouldn't have so many pores, but because of the rust it actually made all these little pock marks and it needs to soak into that to get that rust up and out and convert whatever is, is it can reach
heard my phone go off. That's work-related. Gonna have to go check that one. We might be cutting this video short again today. All right, we're gonna let that soak for a little bit, and then we'll come back to it. Just a little update here. It's been sitting about about 10 or 15 minutes, and you can see it's wet, and that's because that acid has a tendency to turn into uh, actually water. The chemical process will result in water, but it's actually starting to show bare metal in between all of the rest rusty spots. <clears throat> I'm not sure how well the camera can actually see that. You can see all the gray metal in between the rust dots. And the rust dots are turning black. And it hasn't been that long, but I'm going to keep this thing wet for a little while. This is a good solid piece of metal on top of this tank. This uh, top of this tank is actually not in too bad a shape. It's mostly just cosmetic problems that we're seeing here. But uh, yeah, we're going to let this one soak, give it some more time outside. I'm trying not to let it sit in the sun for too long though because it will have a tendency to evaporate the acid as well. And I don't think it, uh, the heat works as a catalyst on, to speed up the uh, process of the acid. It might, I don't know. I'll have to study the reaction. Have to get Cody over at Cody's lab to give us a little description of the uh, reaction here and how that's working. He could actually tell us lots more about it than I could, I'm sure. These cheap brushes always lose their bristles. So, for all the naysayers out there that tell me that this stuff doesn't work, <laughs> and that I'm wasting my time or wasting my money or that this is completely ineffective I think I've just proven them wrong assholes now you can actually see just how shiny it's getting in there so yeah yes it takes off rust yes it treats metal and a lot of that bare metal is going to start turning white so it's going to lose that sheen So anyway, I think we're good with this. I'm going to let this sit a little while. Then we're going to flip it over and get back to uh, cutting and welding. So we're going to attach this top to this bottom. Alright, try to get a better angle here so you guys can see what's actually going on. And I hope this camera is picking it up quite what I see. And you can see that uh, bluish gray of the steel coming through. Just gonna let it keep on soaking. I guess I give it about another hour or so. I'm gonna let it sit here in the sun too to let it dry up as much of it as it can. I don't see any reason to uh, to let it go too much longer. I do still see some red rust marks in here. I might hit them with the wire brush one more time because apparently the uh, acid's not soaking into them well enough. But otherwise, everywhere else that I've put it on, it's it's either taking the rust off or it's turned the rust black, which is what it's supposed to do. Excellent. We're going to leave it be. So anyway, while we're continuing to let that dry up, I scribed a line earlier where the edge of the top tank meets the lower and along here as well. And this is approximately where we're going to be cutting. Now I'm going to cut on the inside of the line, of course, so that way I have a little bit of extra meat in case I need to reposition and move something around. So I don't think that's going to be too big of an issue right there. Um, I think that's good. I'm going to start cutting this guy. Let's see how that turns out. Well, I've got that sucker cut out. I left about, oh, about three quarter of an inch of extra meat around the edge here. Um, one thing that I failed to mention is that you probably shouldn't cut or weld on a gas tank that's ever had fuel in it recently. Now, this tank here has been empty for a couple years, and the top portion of it was actually empty for more than 12. There's no fuel residue left inside of these things anywhere, so there's no danger of this thing igniting or exploding. Uh, so I have no concerns of that. But normally, I would not be cutting nor welding on a gas tank. Just figured I should uh, <laughs> leave that out there for the people, the people that are going to tell me that I'm doing something wrong, because you know how people are on the internet. They all know more than you do. You know, I have been calling this a cheap Chinese tank, and it turns out it's actually Brazilian. 
and it's got a phone number on it too that's somewhat recent so yeah it's an aftermarket but uh, it's certainly not a German quality one German quality ones wouldn't have all these wrinkles in the stamping all right back to it let's see how the top fits on the bottom here Well, I think I'm glad I left that little extra bit because it looks like I'm going to use every bit of it. <laughs> Nothing more, just exactly what I left. I don't have a problem with that. There's a little bit of a bulge right here. I'll put a relief cut in it and fan that out so it's flat and smooth and it contours with this. And then the other side, I took a shortcut over here the other day when something wouldn't fit and I whacked it with a hammer a couple times. But uh, I'll form this back out and also fan it out just the same so it contours with this. No problem there. And on the other side, well, that really doesn't matter so much because wherever this winds up is where we're going to weld it in. Alright, well I had to make a relief cut on this side. I hammered out those wrinkles as much as I could to get as much slack as I needed, but this side actually contoured inward so I had to cut it to open it up. So I have to make a patch for that. On the other side, this side bowed outwards because this is where the film nozzle was. So this was actually too big and there was too much metal here. So I had to take a relief cut out of there. And as you see, the two pieces are trying to touch together. Even though I removed the chunk, that was probably about as big as that from there. Um, I hammered out as much of the wrinkles as I really felt like dealing with. And this part has a much better contour now. It's very similar to what we've got on the tank, the top part, portion of the tank here. And when I drop that on, You'll see how those two ought to, ought to clap together without too big of a problem here. That's what we're looking at. And looking at it from this side, the goal was to make the bottom and the top have the same line parallel straight. I think that's going to work. I think that's going to work just fine. All right, I've got to cut this lip off of here, polish the end of it a little bit, and... Uh, then straighten out the cut that's on here a little bit, get the two pieces overlapped, tack them together, and then cut them both through at the same time. So that way I have a perfectly straight butt weld. Yeah, that's looking good. And look at all those shavings in there. I got to shake into my little can. <laughs> well, we're going to let this finish dry in some more, but as you can see, no more rust inside of it. It's all gone. All the little spots that look like rust aren't rust anymore. They're just little black spots and most of the rust, as you can tell, it turned gray. If I were to come through this with just a wet rag, it'll wipe right through this gray residue and it'll all disappear. But this is uh, still drying. I'm going to let it dry overnight. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to soak the inside of the tank anyway with uh, phosphoric acid once I get to the point that these two are merged together as one. And then at that point, clean it out, let it dry, and then coat the inside of it, and we'll have a working gas tank. Okay, I've got the upper half here, and the lower half, which has been all cut away. Did a little hammering over here some more to try to flatten out some of those wrinkles that were in here. This side's pretty rough. I don't think I'm going to get it any better than that, so we're going to go with it. Put the top right on here, just like this. There's a little bit of an overlap that I'm going for deliberately. I want the bottom to go into the top side on purpose. Because I'm going to tack them together and then running a saw all the way around it, I'm then going to have a perfect cut between both layers simultaneously. And I'm going to get it on here just like this and you can see that line that I scribed earlier. We're actually higher than that, so I'm glad that I left that extra bit of metal on there. Tacked in on the one side. We need to press this together over here and do the same thing over here.
not too bad. Unfortunately, it caved in a little bit right here. I'll have to try to, you know, I can bend it up a little bit from the upside and push a stick or something in there and get them tacked together. Once I got these two together, like I said, I'm going to run a saw along the side of this here. My, um, oh, I forget what it's called, panel cutter. It's, it's a jigsaw by any other name. Run it along here, cut a couple inches, weld. A couple more inches, weld. A couple more inches, weld. And that should give us a nice, straight, contoured, Tack it in a couple more spots and just flip it around and see how it looks. Just occurred to me that uh, <laughs> I didn't polish the rust off of this lip like I did on the rest of it. I actually missed this surface. So before I do the final weld on it, yes, I'm going to need to come back here and uh, get the rust off of that as best I can with a wire wheeler. Some other utility. <laughs> wow, that turned out much better than I expected it to. I was wondering if that was actually going to miss or if it was going to hit or what we were going to have there. No, that got it. Right where it needs to be. Welcome to Florida. You see that big black cloud that's over the horizon? This time off to the east and heading west. I feel the wind right now coming out of the southwest, so it's actually it's coming this way. It might actually miss me. But uh, if I start to see it getting a little bit closer, we're going to be packing it in shortly. So I guess I should show you where we're leaving off at. Here's the tank. Uppers and lowers are currently mated just by tacking them together. I got the little uh, section in here for the fuel sender, made it up to the upper, and I was quite surprised that the contour of it is, is just perfect. It actually lined up perfectly, and, and I took like really unofficial measurements. <laughs> I kind of I kind of bullshitted this one. Yeah, I just kind of threw it together and, and it laid parts on top of each other and just started making little cuts, and then that's where we're at now. This has made it up pretty well over here. I'm going to weld in there, and I got to cut a line this way. These layers are overlap, so I'm going to cut through both of them, which will give me a perfect mate. These two will butt just fine. And over here, I'm glad that I cut way beyond that line, because where I'm going to be uh, going in up here, I'm going to be cutting right through here. Now, there are some holes here, so I'm going to try to cut above them, and then through, all the way to the end. And then, of course, down through the side over here, and then all the way around the other side. An inch at a time, weld, inch at a time, weld. That way the thing goes together straight. But otherwise, this tank and the combination of parts here almost looks like it was meant to be. And when I get done with it, it will look like it was meant to be. I just really love how the sender is just lined up with all this. <laughs> oh yeah, that storm's getting a lot closer. Just in a couple minutes here, I've been talking to you. It's booming. Okay, I'm going to start wrapping it up. I don't want to get my welder wet. Not a good idea.
There it goes. Gotta get the camera out of the rain. <sighs> Didn't quite get everything in in time. Not a whole lot left. A couple of boxes and a motorcycle. Huh. Well, stay at it, I guess. <laughs> also need to sweep the driveway, but otherwise, all of the steel pieces that are on the ground are gonna rust and leave stains in the driveway. I gotta use my fancy broom, the broom that you guys love so much. couple of hand tools laying outside and a few other little bitty things but when it started to rain in the garage door enough was enough this is a huge puddle over here now and I, I can't say I've ever seen that happen it's blowing that hard anyway there's my tank it's a little dark I know let's see if I can bring the color up on this a little bit for you guys uh, let's see here low lux there we go all right, there is the tank, where it's going to be. There's my low-profile tire. That will be my spare, and that's the size I'm going to use. I think that this, in general, um, fits pretty damn good. The tire just clears the hood. In fact, I'm going to put a pe little piece of clay up on there and close it down and see just how close it actually gets. I'm sure it's going to be really close. But that's it for today. Please go ahead and like my video, click subscribe, ring that little dingle belly there in the corner, and please subscribe to my other channels, VV the Duck, VV, and Skeeter the Duck, and also right here on Duckman Cycles. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, hopefully it stops raining.